Good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another edition of PT on Ice Daily Show. My name is Jason London. Uh, I'm clinical faculty for the Rehab of the Endurance Athlete series, so both the Rehab of the Injured Runner and the Bike Fitting uh, course. So happy to be here with you guys today on Fitness Athlete Friday. Uh, Going to talk a little bit about stretching. So should our patients be stretching? Should we be having our stretching? patients be stretching and should we be stretching ourselves so you know definitely in the world of endurance sports um, stretching has a real common place um, many people are kind of stretching before they go out for a run um, or stretching before for biking etc and is that the right thing to do and in the clinic is that the right thing to do with our patients so I think really uh, the first thing we need to ask is what is our goal with stretching? So are we trying to prevent injury uh, with stretching? So maybe getting a little bit more range of motion uh, to have proper technique and thus uh, potentially pre prevent injury? Um, or are we trying to pr improve performance? So if it's a fitness athlete, you know, do they have enough shoulder range of motion, hip range of motion, and ankle range of motion to do a front squat properly um, and, and have improved performance with that? Uh, if it's a cyclist, do they have enough hamstring flexibility to allow them to get into a more aero position? Or if it's a runner, do they have enough mobility to be able to get their leg behind them and prevent uh, overstriding? Um, or are they trying to just simply have some recovery after training and bounce back uh, from their strengthening or their conditioning and get after it uh, sooner and harder without uh, delayed onset muscle soreness the following day? Uh, or lastly, are we just trying to decrease pain and dysfunction? Uh, so similar with like a cervicogenic headache with just some tightness of the suboccipital muscles um, and treat them that way. So overall, you know, our goal with stretching or the goal with of stretching is to increase range of motion, right? So we're in trying to increase range of motion around the joint um, and, pro and promote better mobility, better posture, uh, better technique. <laughs> And what are we trying to do with this? Are we just trying to increase tissue extensibility or are we just simply increasing the patient or the athlete's tolerance uh, to stretch? Um, or do they really have a contracture of the muscle that we're, we're trying to increase the, the length of the muscle? So again, with the tissue extensibility. Um, so, you know, that's one thing to, to consider and, and, you know, while you're assessing that athlete or that patient, you know, what is the, what are you finding the cause of that limitation of the range of motion? Is it, is it purely muscular? Is it neuromuscular? Or is it, uh, you know, other soft tissue joint restriction? And then having, you want, you want to address the, the appropriate thing. And <clears throat> there are certainly different types of stretching that, that we can go through um, or that you can utilize for, for the athlete. Uh, you know, the most common stretch stretching technique is of course static stretching i think everyone knows that from you know just life in general and in grade school gym uh, so holding a stretch uh, in a position you know the calf uh, gastroxoleus complex is probably the one that's most studied in the research in looking for increasing uh, dorsiflexion and so you're you're know, doing that calf stretch whether you're you know dropping your heel off of a step or having that leg behind you with the knee straight and going into dorsiflexion and then holding that stretch for a period of time, not bouncing or kind of moving in and out of that um, position to, again, try to increase flexibility. Um, and, you know, what should the, the hold time be if we are doing static stretching? You know, the research is kind of all over the board. Uh, as little as 15 seconds has been shown to increase uh, range of motion around the joint, uh, particularly with, again, the ankle joint with dorsiflexion. Uh, but if you're thinking of it being a, you know, soft tissue contracture, you're definitely going to need to hold it for more than 15 seconds to, to really gain tissue extensibility. So if you have someone with a post-operative contracture, um, you know, needing to do a long uh, stretch, low load, 
uh, low load, long duration stretch to you know looking at thinking of Wolf's law and really trying to make changes in in tissue length. Um, so in general, again, if it's not a contracture, you can probably get away with as little as 15 seconds. Typically, it's going to be around 30 seconds. But then as we age, needing to, to hold that stretch longer, so more in the 60-second realm. And then if we are truly trying to change tissue length, um, we're going to need to hold that stretch for at least three minutes. Um, and then there's, of course, dynamic stretching where you're moving through the available range of motion of the joint. Um, and kind of moving in and out with doing different movement patterns and with the intent here of trying to warm up in the body, warm up uh, the machine, so to speak, to get ready for, for that activity. And then lastly, uh, PNF stretching or contract relax is where you're doing some sort of isometric contraction and then uh, going into a stretch. So there's many different ways that you can do this. All of them have shown to increase range of motion around the joint. So you can do isometric hold of the muscle that you're trying to stretch and then move into further uh, depth of range of motion. Uh, so for example, with the shoulder, if we're trying to stretch internal rotation, you have them sideline and kind of a sleeper stretch position, having them rotate into internal rotation and then pushing into um, so here in this case we're trying to stretch the, the posterior shoulder, so the external rotators. So pushing into external rotation, holding, and then relaxing and should be able to get more range of motion that way. But alternatively you can stretch the antagonists too. So you can stretch the internal rot or do an isometric hold of the uh, ant antagonists too. So doing uh, a hold into internal rotation or uh, isometric into internal rotation and then relaxing and rotating down further and then you know how long do you hold that isometric contraction again there's lots of different um, support in the literature for different holds generally though you're going to be fine if, if they're just doing a five to seven, seven second hold and then with in terms of the percent percent MVC or how hard are they doing isometric um, a lot of the literature earlier on was supporting, you know, a kind of a max voluntary contraction or 75% of MVC, but other studies have shown that as little as just 25% will get you the same results. So, you know, what does the research say just in, in preventing those, those questions that we talked about at the, the beginning um, in terms of preventing injury. Well, static stretching uh, definitely does not <laughs> prevent injury and has not been shown to prevent injury, at least uh, especially if you're looking at performing static stretching right before your activity or your sport. So static stretching actually, uh, the majority of research supports that static stretching prior to the activity actually decreases performance and decreases your ability to generate force through that muscle that, that you stretched. Um, but on the, the flip side, a dynamic warm-up has been shown to, one, not uh, decrease performance after following that and perhaps improve performance. And if you're trying to go through the right movement patterns, etc., cetera, um, and really reinforce um, good technique, uh, dynamic stretching does have the potential to prevent injury. So. Uh, ACL tears in in female soccer players is, is a great example of that. So having a dynamic warm-up where they are really focusing on generating uh, torque and tension through their hamstrings, uh, really doing squats with good form and not falling into to valgus uh, has been shown over and over again to drastically reduce or significantly reduce uh, ACL tears throughout the season uh, in female soccer players. Uh, and if you're looking for a resource on that, uh, the FIFA 11 Plus program is is a really well done program. It's great information um, on their website with videos, handouts, etc. And basically every study that you see in ACL prevention, looking at kind of these dynamic warm ups and, and movement patterns, are uh, some form of this FIFA 11 Plus. Then how about um, improving performance? Well. 
so again, uh, to prevent injury, we want to do dynamic warm-ups uh, or dynamic stretching, not uh, static holds. And for how about for per improving performance? Well, in order to to do your your sport or your um, or the the strength training lift uh, properly, you need to have the the right mobility to do that. And if you don't have that mobility, you're not going to perform as well as is a counterpart with with good mobility. So in that instance, again, assessing you know what's the cause of that restriction. But let's say it is just uh, increased tissue tension or lack of extensibility of the tissue. Doing some static stretching for for that to improve that mobility is is a great way to get after that. Uh, so for example, let's talk about running. Um, so with running, we need enough mobility in the lower extremity to get our leg behind us. So we can get an adequate stride and push off and not be forced to, to overstride. So a lot of times this can be due to um, poor flexibility or poor range of motion at the hip into extension. We don't need a ton, we just need enough to get our, our leg behind us without compensating. And so having that athlete or that runner do some sort of static hip flexor stretch, again holding for you know probably 30 to 60 seconds, doing uh, two to three reps of that, is going to help them get some some better mobility at the hip and allow them to get their leg behind them. But really to, to get that to carry over, I'm a big proponent of having them then do some strengthening, utilizing that, that increased mobility. So as simple as just doing a single leg bridge um, or doing kind of more complex movements where you're doing triple joint extension, uh, you know, with a step up moving into to hip extension with that. And then having them kind of using that as their dynamic warm up before getting in, into running. So uh, again, static stretching has been shown to decrease performance uh, prior to running or prior to doing your your sport. However, that decrease in performance is negated if you do a dynamic warm up right after that static stretch. So. Um, if someone is going to be doing some static stretching prior to their, their event, just following up with a, a dynamic warm-up or dynamic stretching will actually allow them to perform at the, the same level as if they didn't stretch at all or perhaps even uh, perform better. So to increase performance, I think you know static stretching does have a role there. Just make sure you're following it up with some strengthening, with some loading, in that new range of motion so they do have the ability to use that new range of motion as well as control that new range of motion. So moving on, what about recovery? Well, uh, for recovery, you know, static stretching really hasn't been shown to, to improve recovery. However, just active movement uh, does. So whether it be foam rolling, which uh, there's definitely some research to support recovery and um, a decrease in delayed onset muscle soreness uh, following a workout if they do if someone does foam rolling uh, as well as uh, just increased blood flow to to those muscles perhaps that's what how the mechanism of the uh, decreased delayed onset muscle soreness is working with that or yoga um, too is another uh, studied method of stretching that has been shown to promote recovery and just decrease, um, you know, even s systemic inflammation. So active movement after an activity, kind of going through, you know, full ranges of motion if possible is going to be the best thing for recovery. Uh, so for example, with a cyclist, you know, if they're out on a 100 mile ride, they're out for a couple hours typically, and they're kind of in this chronic amount of hip flexion, a little bit of, of spinal flexion, they need to, to be able to move through into hip extension, into some spinal extension for proper recovery after that. Otherwise, um, the, they are not going to be um, performing at their, at their best the next time they go out for the ride or just feeling overly sore. So for recovery, really um, promoting the use of either foam rolling or yoga. And then lastly, pain and dysfunction. Uh, again, 
key here is assessing what is causing the the restriction in range of motion or the re restriction in, in muscle length. And here too, I think we can see, you know, again, with looking at cervicogenic headache, perhaps as a, um, a good example, doing, you know, something like a suboccipital release, doing some uh, upper trap or levator stretching does uh, provide patients often with a lot of relief from that cervicogenic headache or just chronic cervical pain in general. But then, as with uh, looking to improve, improve performance, following that up with, have, with either a good postural exercise, um, some strengthening, or some loading. And, and that's kind of the take home message is yes, uh, you know, our patients should be, you should be having your patients stretch if needed. So, first assessing if, if they need to do that. And two, really making sure that you are following that, that stretching up, whether it be a dynamic stretch or whether it be a static stretch, with some loading or with some, some postural training or with some strength training so that you do, those patients are then using that new range of motion and, and kind of finding their, their new normal. So, uh, quick question here. So, Marcy asks, when static stretching for gaining lasting range of motion, do you prefer more reps of shorter duration or holds up to one to two minutes? Um, so, with that, Marcy, uh, you know, it really kind of depends on how chronic that limitation in, in motion has been. So, if it's something where, you know, it's almost more like a contracture, uh, we definitely need to do longer holds. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, kind of thinking of that lower load, long duration stretch of probably around three minutes at a minimum. If it's someone where, you know, they're just feeling more tight and you look at their, their range of motion and they are a little bit restricted, um, but that hasn't necessarily been going on or they're, their pain hasn't been going on for the reason that they're seeing you for very long, uh, they're probably going to do better with shorter um, duration holds. Uh, for, so typically like 30 seconds is, is what I have them do um, for two to three holds of that. And then just, just reassess, you know, did they gain that range of motion? And if not, <laughs> you know, then doing the, the longer hold. Um, but the key with getting that kind of lasting range of motion, uh, which I think is the heart of your, your question, is uh, the frequency and just the consistency of that. So making sure that they do have some sort of mobility program to their, their training that they're doing on a regular basis and not overdoing that, not just emphasizing the stretching because definitely just with only stretching and or really focusing a lot on stretching and not as much on strength, that's going to have someone run into to issues uh, big time. So I'd rather have someone be a little bit tight and not be really having doing any stretching and focusing more on the strength aspect and just trying to maybe gain range of motion through those uh, strengthening exercises than uh, just stretching all day long or, you know, only performing yoga and then going and trying to lift or going and trying to, to do um, a, a longer run. So another reason um, maybe not to stretch is if you have an acute injury. Uh, hamstrings uh, is a thing that comes in mind. Everyone wants to stretch hamstrings once they, you know, tear a hamstring, and that is definitely the wrong thing to do. Uh, and will lead to uh, prolonged recovery and perhaps not even getting uh, full recovery if someone is stretch, you know, constantly stretching their hamstrings um, after uh, a hamstring strain or, you know, even just uh, stretching too early with that. So definitely pro promoting with an acute injury, try and do a little bit more of a dynamic stretch or dynamic mobility with even a little bit of a protected range uh, initially. All right, so that's, that's what I got for you guys today on Friday. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, any questions, go ahead and um, put them down below in the, the, the bar and Facebook, and I'll uh, get to it, or otherwise Alan will remind me to get to it. And I hope you guys have a great weekend, and uh, get outside.
Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.